What's going on, Pokemon Go trainers? Welcome to episode 92 of Lured Up, the podcast that takes Pokemon Go way more seriously than we do ourselves. Lured Up is part of the Pokemon Professor Network. Today is Tuesday, August 20th, 2019. I'm your host, Ken Pescator, joined by my co-hosts, Adam Tuttle and Melissa Pescator. Hello, friends. Hello. Howdy. <laughs> But we're not we're we're not alone. Never alone. Jersey is in the house right now. Jersey stand up. Panda man is in the house. What's going on, dude? Yo yo yo. What's up, man? Oh, dude. I'm I'm ex- I'm very excited to have you on the show. Not just because you're from Jersey, just because you're an, you're an all around cool dude. And uh, we got to chill in Chicago, and it was fucking awesome. So I'm glad uh, I'm glad you made it on the show. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me, sir. Hell yeah, hell yeah. All right, little housekeeping, really quick. This podcast is powered by Patreon. Please check ours out over at patreon.com slash Pokemon Professor, where you can support this show for as little as $1 a month. And that $1 will get you access to our patron-exclusive Discord, which is a fantastic place filled with fantastic people. Sure is. (laughs) Fucking late. And I want to give a huge shout-out to our show supporter tier patrons, Brittany, J, Matt, M. Pitts, Terry, David, Chris, Sydney, Bacon, L, The Noise, Harry, Pokenab, Bot, Purple Pancakes, Dem Gears, Be Bangin', Lady Goobly Meat, Super Nerd Fox, Go Ranger, Matt, Reversal, The Phoenix, Baker Boy, Jolt Switch, Alex, The Illustrious Overseer, and new for this week, Jason. Thank you guys so much. Holy shit, that's a big-ass list now. Welcome, Jason. Yes, and also a big special thanks to Jack and Jordan for joining at the Discord tier. Thank you guys so incredibly much, and welcome to the Discord. More than Welcome to PvP. All that good shit. And a huge shout-out to our executive producer, Paul Bott, and our Elite Four patron, Jessica Pfeiffer. And uh, if Patreon isn't your thing, there's a few other ways you could help support us. Uh, If you're listening on YouTube, you can subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell. If you're listening on a podcast service like Apple Podcasts, you can take a moment to leave us a review. Five stars are the best stars. All right. On today's show, we're going to get to know Panda Man. Uh, the ultra. Uh, right, the reason we're recording on a Tuesday, by the way, is because they had a, a Niantic had announced that today, the 20th, there was going to be a big announcement. And holy shit, there was a big freaking announcement. So we're going to review all that stuff. We'll get there. Uh, the first ever Pokemon Go PvP Invitational happened this last week. We'll talk about that. The Water Festival is coming back. And uh, we'll have a little bit of a discussion on how the release of new generations benefit all types of trainers, because Melissa and Adam and I are are different types of trainers. <laughs> so, we'll, so we'll kind of break down all of that good shit. All right, Panda Man, how are you? Introduce yourself. Talk about you. Talk about yeah, your welcome channel. To the Where show. are you from? The floor welcome. is yours. How are you, man? Introduce yourself. <laughs> Start dancing. <laughs> Quick. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, name's Panda Man with the plan from Jersey, repping Jersey all day, every day. Uh, I grew up in Montclair. I went to school in Montclair, but I also grew up in Orange, New Jersey. So representing both of them, and uh, basically that's 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 it, man. Eighties babies, born in eighty seven. I've been playing Pogo since the since the drop, since it came out. So, do you damn. have uh, you have any history with Pokemon before Pokemon Go? Hell yeah, I was playing that <laughs> shit. <laughs> I was playing that shit when it dropped, man. I was playing Pogo once it dropped. I was playing Pokemon once it dropped. I remember we had the blue cartridges, yes. red cartridges, still big ass Game Boys at the time. I remember when Link Cables dropped, you know, for the first yeah. time. Uh, I was a part of the Pokemon League at um, Time Warp Comics and Games out there in Cedar oh Grove, God. the comic book there. store. Yeah, when that first opened up, I was a part of that for the trading card game. You know, I was in there busting ass. And um, that was before, like, nobody knew what was going on. You know, we was just having fun. And then once the once it started to get real corporate, like, I was around when you could get, like, a Charizard holographic card for, like, 300 something dollars you know yeah. when they start when they started putting prices on that shit like that's how that's how long i i've been around with that that's awesome and uh, time warp i remember so i i grew up in elizabeth melissa's from union elizabeth you know, so yeah so we're, we're we're definitely from the area and i remember you know time warp was like a destination when i was a kid like if we were you know figured out a way to get to time warp it was the shit because that was that was such a cool shop yeah you know what i mean like it was you know maybe maybe once a year or something like that growing up i was able to you know make it out there which is really freaking cool but no, that that's awesome man union county essex county representing that's that's freaking awesome we love uh 
we love East Coast peoples up in up in yeah. her. So that's that's, <laughs> that's that's great, man. So you said you've been playing Pokemon Go since the beginning. What what are your favorite ways to play the game? Like, are you into raiding? You into PvP? How do you how do you like to play? I mean, honestly, once it dropped, it was all about the the um, raiding systems. Like once that came out, because you know everybody was sitting for the nearbys. I remember when the computers had dropped before there was actually like all these Poke Maps. Now I remember being in like Verona Park. And chilling with dudes that would just sit around with computers and find the Pokemon, you know, before <laughs> anything. Yeah, seriously, before anything had actually came out to find them. I think the nearby came out for like a day or two and then it stopped working or something like that. So um, my best way was going through the Discord. It, it was funny because everything was brand new at that time. Everything was being created at that time and starting to pop at that time. Like Discord was out, but it wasn't really popping like that. I'll be real with you. Once Pokemon Go dropped uh we started a discord and the discord just started flooding like went from like 100 to like 200 in like a week and then 300 400 500 so you got like almost a thousand people so then like just meeting up with those people just just getting a chance to interact with other people that was doing the same thing that i was doing so like i guess rating but i guess it was more so just socializing with everybody and just seeing how everybody was feeling about what was going on you know, that's interesting that you talk about Discord and, and how the community kind of grew exponentially. And, you know, you're kind of at the center of that because one of the things that attracted me to to your brand, the Panda Man brand, you know, oh, the Panda was brand. The, the Panda brand the Panda <laughs> was, you know, like even chilling at, you know, Poke AK's after party in Chicago is like, yo, you were you were like you were rubbing elbows with everybody and like everybody knew you, man. I was like, yo, this cat's in the middle, man. Like this is fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's, it's, it's pretty cool seeing, uh, cause you have a YouTube, right? You, you, you've got a channel. You're, you're yeah. a content creator. Yeah. 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 I'm a content creator of Pokemon go, but I'll be honest with you. I went to school for uh broadcasting and media. So I did a lot of things in there. I did radio station for the college in the beginning. And then, um, you know, my mom's used to work for the college in the audio visual department. So, you know, I grew up around cameras just being in the closet, them big ass cameras from the nineties. Oh, I grew wow. up with us. You know, rocket I grew up with shoulder yeah. rocket launchers. <laughs> the rocket launchers. <laughs> I grew up with all of that. So it was always a camera around, you know, and then I started to edit. And then I guess when Pokemon Go came out, I just saw like an opportunity uh to just try to put the skills really to to use. You know, so YouTube is there, but it's more of a, it's a platform, but it's more for me to just kind of just poke around at shit. I'm not going to lie. You know, I don't really think I take it as serious as, um, as most people do. Well, you know, what, what's interesting about that, and even just to, to pull the curtain back and we were talking before we hit record, the community at large and chilling in, in Chicago and all that, and you know, it, it came across of, you know, being genuine and things like that. And I think that your approach to YouTube, even how you're explaining it now, that you're not taking it seriously, that's taking it seriously. That's that's the way that you take it. You know what I mean? Like just hearing that is like, oh, shit, it's it's not. Yeah, it's it, humbling. It's, it's a creative outlet like that's Yeah. Yeah. Cause you know, it, that's the, <laughs> it's like I it's not think, doesn't have to be a grind. <laughs> yeah, I don't. It, it's not to be. I'm not trying to badger nobody or, or like put nobody down, but I think nowadays when you look at how people take it, it's kind of like, yo, like chill the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you got, pe <laughs> you got people, you know what I'm saying? You got people that's really, you know, talking about they got social anxieties and they're building up depression and, and things that they never had before. But the fact that they're doing a lot of this social media and they're, and they're banking on so much get back from it, you know, it, it it's bringing out all of these things. And I'm and I'm telling people that at the end of the day, what you put in is what you're going to get out. You know, if I ever wake up and I think that I got to do a video just for subs, like I'm not going to do it. Right, you you right. know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to do that because then the material that I put out is not it's not going to be what I think it should be. Because you're forced. Yeah. You know, and that, that's why I don't drop a lot of content like that. Like I drop content when I want to drop content you know what i'm saying like youtube uh, not giving me no money you know i ain't got no contract <laughs> i ain't got no contracts i'm not bound by no none of these motherfuckers to do nothing for them so 
you know, and, and I do get it. Like we live in an age nowadays where you can just do some silly shit and really pop. Like, you know, you got motherfuckers swallowing cinnamon, you know, making millions of dollars. Just, <laughs> yeah, that's just, so fucking true. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and that's how it is. And, and I get that, but I'm, I'm not going to do that because I said before, like I already went to school for stuff like that. So I just look at this as like a canvas for me to just paint on. And, and when I don't like it, I could just erase it. You know, I don't really pay attention if anybody's watching or not. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's like I that. Like that's going to keep it, keep it pure. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's cool. That's, Cause that's, I, that's cool, man. That's actually very refreshing to hear. We hear so many different perspectives about creators and, uh, you know, when, when you, you know, I love the, the analogy of, you know, like a canvas, it's like, it's there when you want to paint. And when, you know, if you want to just walk by it one day, you're good. You know, <laughs> that's, that's totally fine. Yeah, yeah. But so we talked about the Panda brand. Now, if mm. someone were to go to your channel, the first yeah. thing they're going to notice is the Panda head. Of course, you got pandas everywhere. You got yeah. panda in the name. Yeah. Yeah. So what's it about? Uh, yes. I need to know the history here. I need to know <laughs> the, the backstory of the Panda head because, this is this is beyond just you know a two D branding. This is something that's kind of become a, a physical you know enigma. Yeah. What's funny is that when if when I first started it, it didn't have shit to do with an actual panda like the animal. I used to watch this movie back in the day. Hook. You remember Hook? Well, yeah, um, yeah. 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 Robin Williams. Yeah. Right. Like the Peter Pan shit mm. and. Uh, there's a part where uh, Robin Williams came back and uh, Rufio was like, you know, uh, welcome back to Neverland, Panda Man. And uh, yeah. I just I, I stuck with that. And then it became like my gamer tag when I had Xbox and my video games. I just put Panda Man. And some kid will always be like, you know, when I was online, they will always be like, yo, what is Panda Man? Like, is that a panda? Like, are you a panda? And I would always <laughs> have to correct them. And I would say it's Pan the Man, not Panda yeah, right. You know, not Panda Man. It's Panda Man, not Panda Man. Yeah. But then people just kept people just kept messing it up, and they kept messing it up, and I just let it flow. Honestly, at the end of the day, then I just started putting pandas and shit there. <laughs> like, yeah, I love that's, that. That's awesome. I love that so yeah. much. That's it's an accident. Totally. <laughs> it's a happy accident. accident. Yeah, it's like capitalizing on you know. <laughs> I just so embrace. I embrace. No, but it. it's it's become like it, it's it's synonymous with you now, and it, it's hilarious. And and the 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 origami style head you had in Chicago <laughs> was out of control. Shout out to Tonton, you know, Sean Tonton, the one that uh, put that together. You know, that was insane, man. Like it, it was such a cool look. Like I, I saw it, I was like, "Oh shit, this is this, this is, is next level panda." This is some real acid trip shit. I was like, <laughs> when I did it, what's funny is that there's another panda head uh, here, and uh, at first the idea was that I, I wanted to do shit, but I really didn't care whether people saw me or not. You know, so when I really started, I think I was talking to Teddy Burr, and um, we was, you know, I was trying to discuss the fact of like people don't really care about, you know, what it is. People really just care about the product. They don't really care about who's behind the product. And like, you got people out there like, you know, Dead Mouse and, and Marshmallow and shit like that, that honestly was putting them things on so they could be able to just do what they do, but still be able to walk outside and not have to be worried with none of that shit. So I just said, I'll combine that with the fact of that it's just funny as hell. And being around <laughs> from East Coast and in New York, you could get away with shit like that. You could put on a panda head and walk around New York and, and people still going to order cups of coffee around yeah, you. But- like, you know, <laughs> nobody cares. Yeah, <laughs> no, but no- you go to New England, New Hampshire, and they're like, oh, yeah. uh, nope. Yeah. Nope. Everybody We're gonna call wants to This guy looks like, weird. This guy's on meth. <laughs> <laughs> he just ordered yeah. a coffee black. Yeah. No sugar, no cream. That's uncalled for. <laughs> Nobody does <It's> psychopath. <laughs> Clearly, something yeah, that that's how that's really cool though, man. That, that's that's a that's a funny as hell story. But no, I, I I dig that, man. I think it's I think it's real cool. And I think we I first met you. It was Squirtle Community Day, right? We we did uh, what was it? Saddlebrook River Park, right? And uh. You were up there, and I was just like, "Yo, who's this fucking dude with the panda head?" I go, "What the fuck is going on here?" I was like, "I gotta, I gotta figure this out." Like, right. this is so weird. This is so cool. But right. no, that's 
That's cool, man. That, that's that's really awesome. And and even then, you know, and and Squirtle. When was that? That had to have been. Uh, that was before shit, Go was Fast last year, because I was listening yeah, to that so podcast, that, and we had just it was probably like about April, it. May, or something like that. Yeah. So like even. Even then, what was cool about your dynamic, it was just like you had this crew that was rolling. Omnisec, the Burrs, Will Rock was there, Mrs. Mime was there. Yeah. You know, there was a whole bunch of people um, kind of all all in this crew. And I was like, yo, this is fucking awesome because I was so used to seeing this in California. Seeing it on YouTube and you got Gilly and Mystic 7 and Trainer Tips. You know, they're all grouped up in, in California yeah. and Dark Matter Wolf. I was like, dude. And then all of a sudden, we're in, I'm in fucking Saddlebrook, New Jersey. And I'm like, yo, look. This is happening like right here. This is so freaking cool. <laughs> yeah, and it was like yeah. my first real experience seeing like a bunch of people, you know, with extended arms and monkey, you know, uh, tripods, like gorilla tripods holding them out being like. You know, we making do content. This. <laughs> I, was, I was like, this is fucking awesome. I was like, these are people from Jersey. These are people from, you know, the tri state. I was like, this is, it was really freaking cool. It was really awesome. And, uh, you know, I think that that dynamic has kind of fed into the, the community that, you know, the, the New York crew and the Omni crew and all that stuff has kind of developed into their own, like, very, very, very unique brand and flavor of Pokemon Go content. On well, YouTube and Twitch, well, which is fucking awesome. You know what? They they was always their own people. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not like they were nobodies and the, and the, and the, and we all came along and became somebodies. They, they was already doing they they thing. You know what I'm saying? Like the first person that I met was Alon Jordan. That was the first dude that I met up with, and this was at New York when um Nick came out there for the uh I think release of Sun and Moon. I met Alon yep. Jordan. And then after that, me and Alon met up with Miss Mime and I was telling them, I was like, look, I mean, everybody doing their thing, you know, by themselves and that's fine. But I was like, if we just come together, it, I said, you know, people going to watch it. And then from there, we bumped into Omni. And then from Omni, we bumped into the Burrs. I think then Pogo NYC James had came out. And then I was like, yo, Community Day had popped off. And this was like the first Community Day. And I was like, we can do it there. You know, and New York City, nobody had New York City. And I was thinking like a mob person. I'm not going to lie. I was <laughs> I was like, nobody has New York. You know, I was like, we can take New York. You know, we could take the whole East Coast and, you know, we can make it ours, you know, and it'll build your brands. And Yucky Ducky jumped on board and it was unique because everybody had their own thing going on. You know, Yucky Ducky had like his kids and then the birds was a couple and uh, Omni was just loud as hell and. <laughs> and and Miss Mime was like a traveler, you know what I'm saying? She was always into her shit, and Alon was always just inventing something and pushing things to the next level. And I was just there, you know. I was <laughs> I was just there, you know, in the back. <laughs> yeah, you know, that that that's that's what made it unique. And then James was there, just representing New York in general. So it, it just made sense, you know. It just made sense to all get together and represent and do what they was doing out there in California. You know, you know, it is important as a community to kind of support and reinforce each other. And, you know, it's the the California scene when it comes to content creation and, and the tubers out there. And it, it's it's got to be exceptionally difficult out there because, I mean, you have Holly in Vegas area. You've got trainer tips, you know, Gilly, Mystic 7. Like these guys have 90 percent of the market share of subs, you know, in the game. And it's like, you know, when it being like a startup content creator in that area has to be so incredibly difficult. And then just like Hollywood versus New York, like when regular filmmaking or artistry. That's because like, they just kept a, the money like in-house. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they did. It's like a different thing. They did. It's like a totally different thing here. They did, man. Like they kept all of that shit in-house and that's how they all became who they became. You know what I'm saying? And, and again, like Gilly wasn't just coming out the shadows that's brandon boy right, so right. so he put his boy on and then you got to remember like trainer tips wasn't nick by himself it it, it, it was like nick and juan nick and juan are yep. trainer tips so when juan left i think it was just nick by himself and then um reversal came out there and he met up with him i think remember in the beginning it was him reversal ben tim and um yep. And and then Brandon come comes along, and I remember when Brandon was like, "Show me how to curve a ball." When he asked Nick how to curve a ball, whatever, um, he was already at like a million 
subs. Like, you know, these people came in already fat. You know what I'm saying? And then they yeah, kept it. Well, I know Ben Tim and, and Mystic Seven were both big with the Supercell games, like Clash of Clans and right. stuff like that. So they, right. they had huge, huge followings, which ultimately when they shifted to Pokemon Go, they, it alienated their existing fan base. You know right. what I mean? So they, they they lost a lot. They gained a lot. It was like this weird dynamic. The crazy thing, too, to think about is like Mystic Seven is so freaking young. You know what I mean? Like when Pokemon Go first came out, like he he was, you know, 19 years old. <laughs> something like that so it's like what the hell you know shit man he had no idea though like it's not like he really knew you know what was going to happen i think it was just how social media was growing you know at that time it was just growing like everybody's figuring out you know it's just really still new that people are figuring out that hey i can grab a camera and put myself on a screen and do something and because i'm projecting it to the world somebody's gonna watch yeah it it, it was a a kind of a, a an explosion of a bunch of things happening all at once. Um, and, you know, a lot of talent behind it too. So it kind of, it was like the perfect storm of, of things happening for that, that content scene out there. But right. uh, I got to give props to this New York crew, man. I, I, I definitely, I, I, I fucking love Omni dude. I love him so much. Like he's like, <laughs> it's, the, the amount of energy that he puts out is like, it's the coolest shit, man. He just goes What's off. funny. What's funny is that when I met this guy, right, I didn't even actually talk to him. I was at Philly Free Streets and I heard him laughing <laughs> and I and I was walking <laughs> past him and he had this long ass beard at that time. And um, he was just laughing. And I was thinking to myself, I was walking past him. I was like, who the fuck is that? <laughs> like, and I never talked to him you know what I'm saying, until I got to New York. And I was like, oh, that's that's who this guy is. But I remember just thinking like this guy is so fucking loud. But then when I was watching his um his streams, he got he got a lot of energy, you know what I'm saying? And he really does love to to do this, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I that's that's it's a bunch of fucking characters, man. That's yeah, what's that's yeah. what's so cool. You get that East Coast flavor, dude. Yeah, it's like yeah. you can't you can't you can't duplicate that, you know. Yeah. Again, we're talking about being, you know, being credible and being, you know, real and uh you yeah. can't you can't fake that shit. You we can't fake that shit. We we knew that we was onto something when the Marie community day popped and Nick was like, I'm coming to New York. And that, <laughs> and that's how we knew. Like we were like, yeah, here we go, here we go. And then everybody was like, oh, we gonna come out to New York. And somebody was always gonna be around, whether it was Mime or Alon or Omni or the Birds, you know, or Yucky Ducky or James, you know, some somebody was gonna be there to um take them on that tour. So what's the what's the future of, of your your content look like? Because I saw that you were doing some Harry Potter stuff too, right? Are you, are yeah. you a Harry Potter fan, or did you just kind of? I love do that Hufflepuff. because it was a Niantic thing. You know what? It was a mixture of both. My sister's a big ass fan of Harry Potter, and I'm just a big fan of Niantic games because I like the way that they move and the flow. I like the storylines and shit like that. So I was like, I'll give this a, I'll give this a go. And to be honest with you, it was just a good marketing plan because it's like, yo, it's new, it's new, and I knew that the other um, tubers were tangled up with Pokemon Go and they can't quickly transition from one to the other. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a lot of fan bases that won't necessarily follow them just like that you know i was like let me take a crack at that but the but but honestly just to answer your question um when i when i look back at it again i make content when i want to you know i do what i feel like doing at the end of the day so i really can't say what the future is going to hold you know i just want to be able to still make the things that I want to make. I don't ever want to have to have somebody tell me, you know, what I got to do or how I got to do it or when it has to be put out. But you see um, that that's why you got to sub to your channel, everybody, and yeah. hit the notification bell. So that way when shit does come out, <laughs> it's like, you'll get notified. <laughs> it's like Kurt Cobain. Like, honestly, it's like a Kurt Cobain complex. Like nobody knows. Like he made music, but it wasn't like he necessarily cared who was really there. You know, like, it all just happens. They loved him because he didn't care. And we love you because you don't care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's weird. But but game-wise, yeah, it's definitely going to be Pokemon Go. Um, I'm definitely playing Wizards Unite. Uh, Brawl Stars is going to be coming a lot. I remember when that game dropped, I was actually on top of that um, first, and then I stopped. Because the truth is that I'm a dad. You know, I'm a father. I, I, I have a life outside of this. I work. You know, I used to work 12 hours a day, six days a week, honestly, when we were talking at Saddlebrook. 
And um, I only, you know, that that one day off, I had to really choose what I was doing. And I think that's another thing out here. Like I had a real life, you know, so I really had to choose what was yeah. more important, you know. No, that's that's Completely that's one of the biggest that. challenges. Yeah, yeah. it's like we're we're all faced with that with you know, real life scenarios versus <laughs> yeah. creating content as a hobby and then trying to do it as something that could potentially be, you know, lucrative or monetized or anything. It's like, it's, it's a fucking crazy game. It's a crazy challenge to, to try to balance that, but at the same time still maintain that the important thing of it being a creative outlet and doing it for, you know, a creative release, yeah. you know what I mean? Because it's like, you, you, you you know, it'll lose the spark when you when you kind of stray away from that. I think you're I think you're on to something there exactly. for sure. Exactly. But I guess the best thing to do, everyone, is connect with fucking Panda Man and, <laughs> and communicate with this man on fucking social media because uh I, I think that your your genuine uh positivity and excitement about the community is uh is something that is uh you know, it should be should be promoted. Yeah. Because you know, it's uh, it's a real taste of of the East Coast and taste of Jersey, yeah. and I think that that's that's a very unique thing because, um, you know, it, it's it's funny like uh, you know, I don't hear a fucking accent from from me or, or Melissa. Melissa, sometimes I even get like a little Staten Island out of Melissa, even though she's what? from Jersey. Yeah, but it's like fuck yeah, you sound like a fucking New Yorker sometimes. <laughs> she does. It's like she does, but. It's like you know when I talk to people, they're like, "Oh yeah, you're from Jersey, right?" And I'm like, "Fuck, how do you know?" It's like, but it, it's like even with your social media, I'm like, "Yo, you can tell this dude's from Jersey." I love yeah. it. They <laughs> so they like- know, man. They they know these people. <laughs> they know who I am. You know, it's, it's 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 a big. It seems like it's so big, man. But it's really a small community. Don't cats know who I am? Whether they want to acknowledge it <laughs> or not, you know, because it, acknowledge me. You gotta remember, yo. Acknowledgement can get you a lot nowadays, depending on who acknowledges you. Very you know, true. and some people don't want to acknowledge you because they know you might be onto something. You know, so at the end Haters. of the day, you know they they know Jersey here. So nice. Well, that's fucking awesome, man. Well, dude, why don't you why don't you let our community know where they can find you? Where do you want me? To, where do you want us to send some people to? Yo, dude, you could definitely subscribe to the channel, Panda Man. P A N D three M A N. Holla at me right there. Uh, Twitter, same thing for Twitter. Those two right there, man. Uh, coming soon, probably an Instagram. Uh, people kept asking me about my backpack and the whole Instagram thing. Um, yep. Whether I, whether I was going to do that for my backpack, which was odd, because I was like, what about me? But they wanted an Instagram for my backpack, <laughs> so I was like, I'm think I'm thinking about that because I started to take a lot of pictures too, and uh, I got this crispy ass lens, so. I'm going to make some things happen with that. So stay tuned for the Instagram. But for right now, definitely catch me at Twitter at Panda Man. And uh, holler at me on YouTube right there. Same thing. But, uh, dude, thank you so much for coming on, man. You're I'm welcome. so glad you came Pleasure on, dude. You're, to you're welcome. Yes. The, yes. The, uh, pod, pod father. The yes, pod. the pod father. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Pod father. You're welcome. But yeah, we definitely, uh, we definitely got to hook up soon, even if it's uh, not, you know, not for a big event, man. We're fucking right here. We got to hook up for sure, for I'm, sure. I work in, I work in Linden, bro. I'm in Linden every fucking day. Got to meet up at one of these parks, man. Yep, no doubt, no doubt, man. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on, everyone else. We're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we're gonna run through the Ultra Bonus Unlock Water Festival, all the good shit that's been going on over the past week. But we'll be back right after these words. <laughs> Hold up, everyone. Are you ready for a sing along? Slow poke in a reggae reggae style. Poke, 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 man. Come in. Slow, slow, slow. Oh, and we're back. <laughs> we're back. <laughs> oh, oh, oh we're, guys, we're, we're back, back from our break. <laughs> we're better than ever. Panda Man, thank you so much for coming on the show. Cool fucking dude, man. Yo, if he is not a slice of New Jersey, <laughs> he's a slice of heaven. Yeah, he's a chip. He's a chip off of my old block right here, bro. I like him, bro, bro. So awesome, so awesome. Shout shout to Panda Man. Definitely check him out. I'll put all the links in the description. Make sure uh, you go over there and say hello. Let him know we sent you. That'd be that'd be really fucking cool, man. Cool dude. Uh, center of the community in this area. It's really, really cool to see people that are connected to so many other creators globally come from uh, from our backyard. Really fucking cool. So 
All right, man. We got a ton of shit to talk about here. Yeah, like don't make earlier, any wishes. Let me tell you that. Just... We delay. Oh, yep. Jirachi uh, puns. Mm-mm. We <laughs> we 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 were going to record Sunday night. And then Pokemon Go had said they were going to make an announcement on 20th for the Ultra Bonus Unlock. And we're like, you know what? Let's hold off. Let's wait so we could, you know, squeeze all that news into the show. And fuck, I'm so glad we did because they dropped a freaking bomb. So we'll talk about the Ultra Bonus Unlock. We'll talk about the first ever Pokemon Go PvP Invitational, which was at Pokemon Worlds. Adam was there. Yeah, I was. Adam was Adam was in the crowd. So uh, we'll get his first hand recant. Of, uh, of how Worlds was. Uh, there's also the Water Festival coming back, and then uh, we'll have a little conversation before we wrap up about the release of a new generation of Pokemon and how that kind of gets us excited to re-engage with the roots of playing this game, going out and hunting Pokemon. So we'll talk about all that. But all right, man, the Ultra Bonus Unlock. We knew this announcement was coming, and I don't know, it was like 3, 4, 5 o'clock Eastern time, and there was crickets from the fucking social account. I'm like, when are they going to make this announcement? I, I I don't understand what they're waiting for. You know, I put a, a post up on Twitter like, you know, ridiculous answers only. You know, what do you think the ultra bonus is going to be? And everyone was like, you know, talking all this crazy shit, shinies and, you know, level cap increase and free stardust and all this craziness. But I actually saw an in-game notification before I saw it on social and I saw Pokemon Master Holly's post before I saw the official Pokemon Go post. So it was like, it's the weirdest fucking thing whenever they make these announcements. But let me let me break down exactly what is going on here. Yeah, because I heard it was big. Fucking, it's a lot. There's a lot. I heard it was so massive. So we knew that there was going to be... There was going to be three weeks of rewards. We knew that. September, starting September 2nd, uh, there was going to be three consecutive weeks of all types of shit going on, but they kind of only teased what was going on. We talked about it last week a little bit. Now we have the details of exactly what is happening, and get this shit, there's a lot. All right, week one, they're calling Johto Journey. Johto Journey. This is coming Journey. directly from PokemonGoLive.com. It says, trainers can enjoy a chance to work on their Johto Pokedex while exploring and raiding. Put on your walking shoes as Pokemon never before seen in eggs and Pokemon Go will be hatching during this time. This is what they told us last week. But now we learn that those Pokemon that are going to, you know, have never before hatched in eggs are going to be fucking unknown, hatching from 10K eggs, spelling out U-L-T-R-A. Ultra. Ultra. I like it. This is awesome. I love it. This is awesome. Because I've never caught a wild unknown. I don't know many people that have caught a wild unknown outside of an event, rather, I should say. Like, I mean, just like out there in the wild. So this is a, a fucking awesome opportunity for people that have never attended an event like a GoFest or PAX or Worlds or anything like that to get some unknown in their decks and, and actually get that deck entry, which is freaking awesome. All right, so we got that. Raikou, Entei, Suicune, returning for raids uh, along with other Johto Pokemon, and uh, they don't necessarily say that they're going to be shiny, but I'm assuming. Yeah, and it would be also, a mistake, and nobody would raid if these weren't shiny, because we've had these shiny. for yeah, way too long. they better be shiny. And then now, it says, if you're lucky, you might encounter... Shiny Sentret and oh, Shiny God. Gligar. Two oh, really? fucking random. I'm Yo, so happy Sentret about Sentret. Awesome. Sentret yeah, really? I'm happy oh, because it God, makes like you want to click it again. Dude. Give me Venonat, oh, please. Like, and I, no. I like just I want to be able to click everything that's awful and just and just try See, to I'm, enjoy I, it. I click everything every time. I don't just dis- I don't because you're poke a freak. discriminate. You're a freak. I don't discriminate. Um, I only discriminate if I have the hundred percent of its evolution. <laughs> so I have a hundred percent Venomoth, oh, fully and, powered and, up. And, why would dumb, I catch a Venomoth? It's useless. Pokemon. And also September second through the ninth, also double incubator effectiveness. What? So that, you know, okay. For hatching those ten Ks, so it'll be fucking awesome. So, um, you know, so I wait, don't know what the math is. So you know, bleep, wait, wait, bleep, wait. Blop, but uh, five I got kilometers. A question about that double incubator? Yeah. <laughs> what? So a regular incubator. Is double effectiveness. So, what about a uh, super incubator? That's one point five. Same thing. It'll be doubled. It'll it'll double so the like, effectiveness. So, like, so like a two k egg will hatch like instantly. Yes, <laughs> well, it's like goes into dope. the incubator already hatches. 
Exactly. Yeah, but the ones you're going to want are the 10 kids. Yeah, but, that's you, where the unknown but you know people are going to do I that. I know, but... Right? You know that people are going to do that. Well, but this is the thing. This is why they need us. To, they need to let us delete eggs. Because Wait. if I go to Red Bank and I have no eggs in my inventory and spend 10 stops and get 10 fucking 2Ks or 10 5Ks, I'm going to be pissed. Wait, 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 no, like, I want to you delete. just walk does, uh... like... I don't know, a couple kilometers. What's what's nine? What's 18? No, nine. Nine kilometers. Just walk nine <laughs> kilometers with a regular incubator and you'll be fine. What? That doesn't make any no, sense, we, Adam. Yeah, no. That, yeah, I have no idea what It would be about. walk five kilometers with a regular incubator for a 10K. No, 2K. <laughs> because if you, you just walked Red Bank and you got all nine. Yeah, but why would I need to walk nine? <laughs> because if you put them all, you put them individually in the free one. It goes oh, to one you're saying kilometer. if I do one at a time, yes. if I do one at yes. a time, fuck that shit. When does the special eggs from Friends end? It already ended. What? Yeah, that's, they're that's like done. pink and yeah. yellow again. I was, I was like shocked. I was like, uh, this doesn't look green. Something's not right. Yeah, yeah. well, when we what? get to what our uh, Go Ranger check-in, there's a couple things that are kind of, you know, in the process oh, of yellow. of that's wrapping right. up uh, Blanche's rewards and uh, the gift event. We'll get there though. Uh, but yeah, but now we have 10 case to look forward to uh, starting on September 2nd. All right. Week two. Adam, you want to run through week two? I do want to r- r- walk through week two because week two, global challenge, global hatches. Pokemon from across the globe will join in the celebration this week, along with a special appearance by a mythical Pokemon that will be available to challenge and raids. Ooh. What does that mean? So September 9th Wait, to through the 16th. To be available to challenge in raids. So September yes. 9th through the 16th. Like you can, you can find this mythical Pokemon in raids? Is that I what you're saying? Just or let, let saying? Adam read on because use... it, it won't be as exciting okay. in about 10 seconds. <laughs> okay. So regional Pokemon, Farfetch'd, Kangaskhan, Mr. Mime, and Tauros will all be hatching from 7 kilometer eggs. If you're lucky, you might hatch a shiny. What? Hype. Hype, hype, hype train. Hype, That's hype, awesome. Hype, 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 hype. I need that shiny mod. Uh, they, will, they will remain available from eggs until the end of week three, September 23rd. Um, all forms of Deoxys will make their first appearance outside of EX raids. What? So there's your mythical. And regular raids? That's and regular fine. tier five. Oh, fucking stupid. But all four of them, so you'll have to coordinate and... Because you should be able to do. Can you? You can do the the speed form or the attack them. form. Which one can you do attack by yourself? Attack form you could duo. Oh, okay. Uh, att- attack form is like an easy ass duo. Okay. And then uh, yeah, but need a good team to take on Deoxys. Other Pokemon appearing in raids will help you build a good team to challenge the DNA Pokemon. And then there's also another bonus as well. Two times Same incubator shit. effect. The <laughs> right. So you're still going to be able to do that. But now look. The first week, you're going to want 10Ks for Unknown. The second week, you're going to want 7Ks for the Regionals. Now, these are going to be exceptionally exclusive Pokemon because it's hard enough, you know, the first time around, I remember people not getting a Mr. Mime or a Kangaskhan from an egg. You know, now not only are you going to try to get those Pokemon, but now you're trying to get the shiny version. People that get the shinies, these are going to be coveted fucking Pokemon. But, Melissa, you still need Kangaskhan, right? Yeah, I need that for Oh, imagine decks. you hatching yeah. a shiny Kangaskhan for the decks. It's gonna Please happen. Please screenshot oh, that. It's going to happen. That would be sick. That would be sick. We'll have to get you some incubators. 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 I need an incubator. <laughs> All right, Melissa, what's All going right, on now, week three? This is this is the big one. You're going to make Melissa read something? She's, she's, um, she well, nerds what's it happening all the time. in week three Um is all your research is going to be paying off because Professor Willow will inform us that some of our Pokemon originally discovered in the Unova region are now going to appear in the world of Pokemon Go. Gen That's 5 That's right, confirmed. friends. Hype, hype. Gen 5. Can you name one Pokemon in Gen Guess 5? Guess what? I can't, and I'm excited about that. <laughs> so You know no, why? Look. Because now the game's going to be fun again. All these new little creatures and guys that I'm going to love and hate all at the same time. So... This is the biggest generation as far as dex size of any generation. 155 Pokemon. So there's a ton. And it's also my weakest knowledge base generation. (laughs) So Melissa and I were just talking about this before we recorded. And this is kind of what I wanted to discuss at the end of the show. How this, this, this is, it adds a lot of fucking excitement here. Now, Adam, this is kind of your bread and butter right yeah because i was still playing competitively 
I like I even have somewhere on YouTube there's me unboxing an entire box of black and white TCG cards. Um but like I played I came back in black and white because I was so excited for new Pokemon. And this is where That's Reshiram, Char- uh, Zekrom come from. There's nine legendaries. I'm just I'm Gen, just excited to be able to take pictures of like a Zekrom and be able to put a Pikachu that looks in like. it. Well, look, we're, 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 look, we're talking <laughs> about Gen 5. Oh, no, sorry, guys. Just, <laughs> just listen, 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 listen. Get ready for this. Hold on to your fucking butts. Whoa. Mewtwo with a special move Psy Strike will be available to challenge in five-star raids. If you're lucky, you might encounter a shiny Mewtwo. Fucking shiny Mewtwo hype, yo. This is nasty. I'm so fucking excited for this. Yeah, and you don't need an EX pass for it? You don't need an EX pass. It's just going to be in five-star raids. So now you realize, like, all the people who have never had a chance to catch Mewtwo because they've never had an EX raid, all these communities that have small populations, small communities of Pokemon players, now they have an opportunity to not have to wait and meet up with other people during the week. They, they're they going to have a whole day to do it. That's pretty cool. And Yo, thank the God Discords we have are going to be option. popping off. Thank God we have another option outside of that fucking armored Mewtwo because that shit was stupid. <laughs> yeah. I still I need agree. that fucker. He fucking ran from me. And and shiny Mewtwo is like a is like a toxic green instead of the uh, the darker purple, you know, tail and undercarriage area. <laughs> so it definitely stands out. It's really fucking cool looking. Uh, but all right, more shit, more shit, more shit. Need a good team to take on Mewtwo? Other Pokemon appearing in raids will help you build a good team to challenge the genetic Pokemon. So another shift of raid bosses will happen in week three. And now here we go, Unova. The gear Pokemon, Clink, one of my favorite Gen 5 Pokemon. The gear Pokemon, Clink, originally discovered in Unova, will also appear in raids. You might even encounter Shiny Clink. Right out of the fucking gate, Gen 5 Shiny. Incre- incredible. Get the- Doesn't stop there. Next line. You may also find Shiny Patrat and Shiny Lillipup. Oh. What the fuck? Shiny That's Gen awesome. 5 right out of the gate? It's exciting. And also two-time incubator effectiveness as well. So for the entire three-week duration, we have double incubator action going on. It's going to be fan-fucking-tastic. People are going to be raiding like motherfuckers throughout the entire thing. Yo, they did this right. They did this right. Now, of course, people are flipping out online, right? They're, they're, there's the good. There's the bad. People excited. People that are, you know, bitching about it. People are like, you know, fuck the first two weeks. Who cares about unknowns? Just give me shiny Mewtwo. Um there's a lot of a lot of heat going back and forth. Now, my question I pose to you guys is, is this cooler that this is all kind of happening at once and this week three is fucking amazing? Or would you have rather had this kind of spread out through the summer? Hell no. Give it to me all at no, once. No, this is cool. Yeah. Wow. You know why? You know, because we know that they're going to do holiday events. And the holidays are right around yeah, the Yeah, Deli Bird's coming. So yeah. fucking, yeah, pack that shit in right now, bitch. Pack it in. <laughs> Christmas is only a couple months away. We got this. I still Adam, need like, my 100% Adam, like, whole Deli calendar Bird. off of Deli Bird's release. <laughs> Dude, I was just deleting Deli Bird's today. No. <clears throat> yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> you need space. I, I am very oh, upset with you right now. There were zero stars. Oh, we're, and, I'm, and then I'm the final the kicker, which which we kind of were, were glazing over here because we were, we were at GoFest, is... Jirachi is officially released in special research as of today. So there is a brand new special research. If you already have Jirachi, like if you went to a GoFest, the rewards at the end will be uh, candy and XP and Stardust and all that good stuff. You won't get a second Jirachi. So it'll be just like a new quest. Oh, come on. You had to spoil that for me? But next week, uh, we'll talk about the actual uh, breakout and breakdown of the special research. You know, it's too early now. Uh, A lot of the websites, you know, Pokemon Go Hub, they don't even have... Uh, all the the steps laid out yet and you know i really don't want to spoil it anyway so we'll get let people get you know put a week of experience behind them with this research and then we'll break down uh break it down next week but uh really fucking cool man there's so much shit going on it's uh it's amazing that they were they were able to pack all this shit in i'm i'm really fucking excited i'm really really fucking excited um wait how I'm excited fucking excited yo i'm really <laughs> really 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 fucking excited. Oh, oh, fucking I'm just sure, wicked excited. I'm wicked be. excited. All right, Adam, tell me about Worlds, man. How was your fucking trip? How was it? Oh, my God. It was fantastic. 
That's it. That's it. That's all you get. <laughs> no, so, you know, we got out late. We didn't get to the actual event. I knew that um, PvP was going on. Um, as soon as I saw Nick on live stream, I was like, oh, okay, we should probably get there. Because I was watching the live stream, um, getting ready, um, getting my son ready. We, we leave. We start walking. We get to the event. It's lit it is awesome there's just people everywhere so we we managed to get a seat close to the front because i don't think anybody really was paying attention too much to pvp until after it had been on screen for a couple matches but once it got going like people just kept filling the seats and my son was glued yeah, he, I saw the picture you posted of him he was like he was like entranced he yeah was just like so into and after it. every match he goes because he was watching King, and he was like, he goes, did did, did our guy win? <laughs> I was like, yes, buddy, he won. <laughs> it was the cutest thing, and like every time, like the, like the specials. So nobody and, was like cheering for anyone. No, because like, because that's because that's winning? the thing. Nobody knew who people were really, if that makes any sense. Because these are all okay. card game players, video game players. I don't think they necessarily follow. Okay pvp how we follow it you know what i mean gotcha so you know and like i'm like oh bud one more match and i'm like trying to explain to him like they had to restart because of you know timing out issues and stuff and um but he was so entranced so just he was so focused and it was like i was so like proud dad moment i was like he wants to play (laughs) um and then yeah because he looked at me after all the matches were done and he goes can we do we he's like did you bring the pokemon toys with you because i want to battle and i was like oh, oh yes i was like we'll go downstairs and get you a plush so you can battle your eevee um because yeah, i had purchased him an eevee and he wanted a melt in <laughs> so yeah. well let, let me let me let me catch up here so the pokemon go had its first ever pokemon go pvp invitational at worlds front and center on the main stage friday morning so it was like the first thing that was fucking happening it was streamed live on Twitch on the official Pokemon channel. Now, there's, Pokemon has multiple Twitch channels. They've got their main channel, twitch.tv slash Pokemon. They've got slash Pokemon TCG. I think Pokemon Tournament has their own page. They actually put the Pokemon Go PvP on the lead channel, on the main stage, front and center. It's fucking awesome. So uh, if you go, to, I'll put a link in the description. Game Press actually has the bracket of the tournament, so you can see the actual bracket and how it went down. But there was an eight-player invitational. Masuda and Mirimoto from Game Game Freak, which was fucking incredible. Unlisted Leaf, who's a TCG YouTuber. Yamada, the Japanese Pokemon Go YouTuber. Uh, Pogo King and Poke AK, friends of the show. Um, we had Strawberry17, who's a YouTuber that does some, some weird candy shit. That's fucking crazy, but she actually played really, really fucking well. And Carrie Mei, who is the contest winner that, Adam, you got a chance to meet yes, after I the, did. the event, right? Yes, yeah, it was it was really fucking cool, and uh, it was absolutely amazing seeing Pokemon Go PvP with such high production value. It was so cool, and it was shoutcasted by Nick from Trainer Tips, who looked stiff as hell in a suit. It was so funny because he's so skinny, like the suit made him look so big. <laughs> and and uh, Aaron Cybertron uh, was on there, who's got experience shoutcasting the VGC, which was really cool. So. Ultra high production value, really cool fucking stage show. It was awesome hearing the announcer's voice and the the hostess on stage kind of like, you know, breaking everything down. It was fucking awesome. Yeah, no, and and it was so cool because all of the music and all of the sounds and everything in the game, that was being blared too. So it it gets you so excited. Like, you're like, oh my God, does he hit all the excellence? Does he hit all the ex? Oh, he got excellent. Oh, he missed one. Like, it, it was really cool. There's just the way they announced it and everything. At one point, there was, uh, I think, 13 or 14,000 concurrent viewers on Twitch. And I had my phone screen, um, like the, the screen kind of uh, minimized. And there was like 7,000 people watching the TCG stream and 14,000 people watching the P- the Pogo stream. I was like, oh, shit, this is fucking crazy. I was like, this is this is going to blow the fuck up. Yeah, but, and they had all uh, three know, screens to, and everybody's eyes were in the center. I kid, yeah, I kid you so not. Cool. 
And uh, to no one's surprise, the finals came down to uh, Pogo King and Poke AK. Uh, but that's not to say that uh, there wasn't uh, like some really cool highlights throughout the rest of the uh, tournament. Uh, Masuda using fucking Psyduck and Mirimoto using Lanoon. Oh my god, that double amazing. type. The, using the grass the move. The fucking and... crowd was going nuts. Um, and I was exceptionally impressed with Strawberry 17. She, you could tell that she like really trained because she was doing like uh, charge move switches like and and preloading, you know, charge moves and stuff like that. I was like, yo, she's doing some advanced techniques. I was like, she, it was fucking crazy. Yam- Yamada just barely fucking beat her. Um, but it was really, really cool. But uh, in the end. Uh, after some some significant uh, technical difficulties, they had like no GPS the whole time. It was fucking killing me, man, on the stream, seeing GPS signal not found on the official stream like the whole time, blocking out half the fucking screen. That sucked. Um, but Pogo King ended up taking the win. So congratulations to Pogo King. It was fucking awesome. Uh, you know, he's just become an incredible ambassador for Pokemon Go and especially Pokemon Go PvP. It's really cool that... Uh, that he fucking won really, really awesome. But Adam, I'm so glad that you were able to go. So cool. Yeah, no, it was honestly, it was a blast. Like, and what about the catches? What did you catch when you were there? Oh my God. Okay. Hold on. I actually have to go in real quick. Cause it was insane. I, okay. So just uh, da, 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 going backwards. All right. <laughs> so I hatched an Azrael. When I got there, like we got to the hotel, I, you know, was walking around back and forth, went up and down the elevator a bunch, you know, so like I, you know, got one of the eggs, um, hatched it. It was an Azuril that was a hundred percent. Of course. Cool. And I'm like, okay, cool. Friday, we go to the event. They say, oh, don't forget, you know, Relicanth and a fossil Pokemon are, you know, appearing. So I'm like looking for them. I did not see any relicanth i was like what and then i got a bunch of different tasks i had like one that said send two gifts one that said to catch 10 pokemon catch 10 pokemon was everywhere and send two gifts were not as frequent i uh i'm literally like walking out of worlds after we watched the pogo stream and my first send two gifts was a relicanth i was like whoa okay first relicanth right at the gate It was, uh, I think it was like 1083 or something like that. And I catch it and I just do the appraise thing real quick and boom, 100% my first relicant. (laughs) Oh my God, bro. That's ridiculous. It's like he sent the picture. I was like, this is the, I go, this is the most Adam thing ever to happen. (laughs) Right? No, like, (sighs) and so, so Thursday, I get the Azrael. Friday, I start I start by getting the 100% Relicanth, which is almost all fully powered up. I still am walking it to get candies right now. And then Saturday night, I'm sitting in my in the hotel. I'm just kind of like tired from walking around, doing everything. And, and I'm just like catching fossil after fossil and just sitting there like, I know I got to get packing. I just didn't want to pack. And, you know, up pops an Anorith. Just, you know, whatever, curveball real quick. Boom. It's 100%. So I got an Anorith 100%, a Relicanth 100%, and an Azeril 100%. All in all that's in like three ridiculous. days. And then... Yep, that's Adam. That's Adam, ladies and gentlemen. And then as far as <laughs> shinies go, on the way home tonight to do this podcast, I caught an Onyx, which was unexpected. What? Um, no, and I sniped it. It was like so far back. Like, I don't understand... Like, I, like I, I was in the the spin a stop screen, spinning a stop, and then like I hit back, and it, and I twirled my character around, and he's like all the way in the back of the screen. I was like tap 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 tap. I was like I don't know what that shape is, and then I tap it. It's onyx, and it's green. I was like, oh, <laughs> I hate you so much. But so Thursday again, um, I catch a. Or no, it's Friday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, Friday, Saturday, yeah. Sunday. So there. Friday, I catch a shiny Anorith. Saturday. Oh, my God. Or no, Friday, I caught a shiny Anorith and a Lily. And then Saturday, I catch a shiny <laughs> Lily. 
Sunday, I didn't get Two any. Two shiny Laleeps in one weekend? Yep. And then and then Sunday, <laughs> our, our flight got, to, uh, got canceled. So we had to get a hotel and stay overnight. It was just kind of a mess. But I'm sitting outside waiting for our shuttle to take us to the hotel. Shiny Rattata. I literally wasn't even looking at my phone. I was I had just <laughs> like was like tapping it and I'm like, "Oh, look at that, a shiny Rattata." Oh, that's 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 Adam luck for you. Oh. I hope you have extra relicanth. How many relicanth did you end with? 20. 20? I have 20. Yeah, I have 20. <laughs> that's oh, awesome. Oh god. All right, good. So you could trade us some. Yes. That's all that's all that matters. <laughs> Yeah, it was insane. Wow. In, That's awesome. in Pokemon Go, it was insane. I was only able to do one Suicune raid because of Drift. I There was only one in Worlds, and I was in the middle right. of playing in the DC Open. So I was like, all right. I'm like, like, like my ch- I'm like scratching my chest. I'm like, oh, I really want to get out there and get a Suicune. <laughs> but like, luckily, and, I oh, drifted yeah. and, to one and How did you do in the DC Open, dude? Um, I got 107th out of 654 yes. players, I believe. That's awesome. Um, my, yeah. And it was, it was like two days. So it's like you played seven rounds the first day and two rounds the next day. Played all my seven. Came back. First round, opponent no-showed. And then second round, I was able to take the win. Um, but it was it was crazy. I ended uh, five wins, two losses, two ties. That's awesome, man. That's but you scored championship points, right? I believe so. I haven't like the awesome. website's not loaded yet, but I'm I'm hoping I did because that puts me just that much closer to my world's invite this year. Oh yeah, and uh, next year, 2020 worlds is in London. London. <gasps> That's so, dope. Start planning your trips now, yep, folks. Start, yep, start saving your monies. Moving on, Water Festival, coming from PokemonGoLive.com, Friday, August 23rd, this Friday, to Friday, August 30th, 1 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Melissa, I put this real big so you could read it, because I wanted to hear it in your funny voice. Time to make a big splash! Even (laughs) if you don't live near the water, you can look forward to water-type Pokemon coming to you soon in eggs, raids, field research, and in the wild. That's right! The long-awaited Water Festival is back. What are the features? Water-type Pokemon like Magikarp, Wooper, Whelmer, and more will appear more frequently in the wild. Uh, the following Pokemon will be appearing more frequently in the wild around water. Go figure. War Turtle, Poliwhirl, Seeking, Lapras, Quillfish, Mantine, Lotad, Phoebus, Piplup, Buizel, and Finneon. Finneon That's is still holding out. living in the desert. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. Arizona. Yeah. Let us know Water type you, Pokemon will hatch more often from eggs. Kingler and Crawdunt will be able to learn Crab Hammer, a water type charge attack that's newly available in Pokemon Go. So uh, when I did the show notes, and I still don't think it's out yet, uh, but the Crab Hammer stats have not been released, but the assumption is that it's going to be better than Surf, but not as good as Hydro Pump. So it'll kind of give a little bit more diversity to Kingler. You could run like a Metal Claw, Crab Hammer kind of combo thing, make it kind of... Have a little bit of diversity there, or a dark type move for Crawdon and Crab Hammer. But stats are to come on that, but it'll probably be better than Surf. Uh, and finally, it says if you manage to surf the waves of luck, you might encounter Shiny Carvana or Shiny Barboach. And uh, these are good looking shinies. I definitely. Yeah, basically, like the, the, uh, you don't evolve Barboach. Or yeah, else Barboach you barely cry. looks like it. Yeah. But uh, Carvana looks freaking uh, great. Yeah. You know, it looks really, really good. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Also, coming from raids, water type Pokemon like Blastoise, Vaporeon, Lapras will appear more in raids. Uh, and August 28th, from 6 to 7, another raid hour, uh, Uxi, Mesprit, and Azelf will be in five star raids in their respective regions. Uxi in Asia Pacific, Mesprit in Europe, Middle East, Africa, and India, and Azelf in North America, Central America, South America, and Greenland. So they're not breaking region lock. They're just coming back to raids. So if you missed out on this Pokemon the first time it was around, now's your chance. Uh, this will also be a good opportunity if you plan on attending. Uh, like uh, Safari Zone Montreal, which we'll talk about in a second. People will be traveling from out of town. You're going to want these Pokemon to trade away while you're there because uh, it's a good opportunity to get these 
you know, other regional legendaries. They're fucking rare as hell. Uh, what other kind of bonuses we have? Water Festival, Double Hatch Candy, which is great. Uh, and if you have a Water-type Pokemon as your buddy, the distance to earn Buddy Candy will be halved. So Whoa. that's pretty huge, especially well, if you're big. walking like a... Magic Art. You know, a legendary or something like that. Oh. Yeah, yeah, point, point 0.5 <laughs> candy, point 0.5 distance for candy. But uh, I, I don't know. I remember when the, the first water festival came around. This was when uh, Magikarp, sh- Shiny Magikarp first came out. So the maybe shiny whale. Will, the shiny whale as well. The, yeah, that was last year. But um, maybe we could, people can actually get their fucking fisherman medal during this event. <laughs> because I'm still like 70 Magikarp away from that. Yeah, though, I'm nowhere stupid. fucking near that shit. Yeah, you're like that 10 Magikarp cut. <laughs> 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 Now that we got the news out of the way, and there's a fucking lot, I, I want to have a discussion, and this is kind of where I I'm definitely want to hear Melissa's take on this, because I think this affects her more so than, than myself or Adam. So, with Gen 5 coming out, 155 new Pokemon, there's 9 legendary Pokemon, we'll talk about those in a minute, but the fact that new Pokemon are coming back to this game, and they're going to start to be trickling out, it's the beginning of another generation. Melissa, like you even used this this line, you said the game will be fun again. Like how? It, like this is this is a big deal to the the way you play the game, right? Being able to go out there and and hunt again, right? Like you're into that. Well, it really depends on what these Pokemon look like. So I know <laughs> well, that if there they look was like a one shadow, generation. You don't know what they look like. So no, no, no. <laughs> I know that you. there was one gen where all the Pokemon were very like mechanical and robot looking, and I. Did not like that. So I don't know when that's happening, but that's going to be a very depressing stage for me. So as long as it's like they're still cute looking Pokemon, I'm going to be happy. Well, Tepeg is oh, no, it's some, when they get when they get some like, ones. you know what I'm talking about? Like the, the no, weird like, ones I know that looks are like, like Genesect. You, she, you're never into the inorganic ones like Magnemite or, you know, no, Magnemite. It's, it's all right. It's they get fucking weird. They get weird. They look like they look like Digimon. <laughs> yes, they get weird in one of the gens. We'll we'll get there, but uh, I'm excited to see a bunch of new shadows, and I think 155 of them is a lot to keep me entertained for a hot minute. I, I still don't have all of Gen Four, so let let's let let's uh let's digress a bit. Gen Three Kecleon number 352 still not in the game. So who knows when that's going to come? Maybe that'll have something to do with Arceus. Who knows? Uh, and then in Gen 4, we're still missing uh, Mime Jr., Rotom, and Regigigas. So there's still three Pokemon missing from Gen 4, one Pokemon missing from Gen 3. And here we are with the start of Gen 5. Now, Gen 5 brings nine legendary Pokemon, which is fucking awesome. And they come in trios. Got the Swords of Justice, they call them that because there was a movie. Um, Cobalion, uh, Terrakion, and Verizion. Forces of Nature, uh, this is Tornadus, Thunderous, and Landorus. I love those Pokemon, they look fucking awesome. Uh, and the Tao Trio, Zekron, Reshiram, and Kyurem. And it's going to be interesting to see how they do uh, black and white Kyurem as well. Why are their but names not- becoming so hard to pronounce? Well, because they're running out of words oh, and letters. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, you, you put an interesting point for the black and the white Kyurem. It's got to be like yeah, well, there was... when, uh, I don't even know, maybe once they, they all three of it released, when they bring back like shiny Zekrom or something, they do like a different form. black Kyurem at the same time. I don't know. Because I know that there was there was funky um, conditions, you know, depending on you know the Zek, having Zekrom or Reshiram, you know, would influence... Kyurem, I don't know. So there's, the, it'll be interesting to see how Pogo does that. Uh, but I have 420 rare candy right now. So Jesus. it's like I need new Pokemon just so I can spend it because I've been sitting on this rare candy for so long and it's clogging up my fucking inventory and I got to get rid of it. But I, I'm excited, man. I'm, I, I'm looking forward to the hunt of tracking down Pokemon you know, seeing a shadow at a Pokestop, you know, and, and traveling to that stop to find the Pokemon. That's that's exa- exciting stuff. And, you know, for someone like Melissa, it would probably help to get her out and about because there's it's a little bit more engaging. And the fact that 
I don't know these Pokemon well. Melissa definitely doesn't know these Pokemon well. Like, that makes it exciting, too, learning their names and, like, seeing it hit your decks and then finally seeing what the name of the Pokemon is because you don't know what it is even when you're seeing it on screen. Like It's a flip it's of a jig. Like, this is... Well, some of the names do get weird. They start because they, they're, you know, it's it's like even the Beatles had, you know, only a certain amount of chords they could make their music with. You know, there's only a certain amount nah, of letters. No, but you can still keep their names <laughs> semi-simple. Like, you know, look at the Pokemon and says, you know, say, oh, this is kind of looks like this. Let's call it, you know. This is Bob. It kind of looks like Toast. Let's call him Toastinian. This is Toastini. <laughs> <laughs> this is Tostino's Pizza Rolls. You know, and he's just a perfect square, and he's got, like, you know, brown arms and brown feet and a tan, like, body. And he looks like a piece of toast. That would make me happy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think it's the exciting. I, I oh, like, my God. I, I... Yo. Yo. What? They should totally do this. What? They should totally release a generation of food-based Pokemon. <laughs> all Pokemon Lickitung would eat them all. That the all Pokemon that have some sort of food, like you know, a watermelon guy. You got a kiwi guy. You can have a hot dog guy. Um, have, like, I'm pretty sure I already played that game. It's called guy. Draconius Go. They legit no! have a watermelon That's guy. They need, Pokemon. <laughs> they Niantic, legit Pokemon have a watermelon Nintendo. guy. Listen to me. You need to start designing some Pokemon that have food elements. I'm telling Melissa, you. Melissa's is playing too much Candy people, Crush. <laughs> no, people will fucking love it. You'll Are you telling it. me that you would? Uh, you don't like? I'm. T- I, I think other people would love it too. All right, I want a pickle. A little, Pokemon. A little, a little Pokemon <laughs> that that a Pokemon that looks like a turtle, but like his his shell is like a is, is instead of his having shit. like a regular shell, he's got like a taco shell. His shell. <laughs> Oh wait, wait, wait! Hold on, you're onto something here. This Hold is on. what I'm saying here, like you know, you taco have a turtle. watermelon and instead, instead of, of taco it being Tuesday, like a it's beetle, taco turtle. Yeah, instead of it being a beetle, it has like a giant watermelon body and it spits out seeds. Like I'm telling you, I'm onto something. <laughs> Niantic, wait, wait, no, 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 not Niantic. You got to get who's Nintendo. the game designer? Who's the game designer Nintendo? of Shield of Sword? The game Freak? Are you kidding me? No, no, no. Game I know, Freak. but like the the guy, the lead designer, James Turner. Okay, yes. Get Melissa in James contact. James Turner, call hey, me. Hey, James Turner people, created call vanilla. My people. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, I, okay. He might just want to hear all your ideas. So stop saying them right now ideas. and uh, wait for him to contact us. By the way, if you're not following James Turner on Twitter, please do it because he puts up doodles every day and they're the fucking greatest thing in the world. All right, moving on. <laughs> All right, but no, I'm, I'm, you know, let us let us know what you think about the way generations are trickled out. Um, you know, I, I remember when Gen Four came out, I was like, just give it all to us. But when Gen Three came out, I was okay with the trickle. It's like, I, I think it, it's with this many Pokemon, they're going to be able to keep us engaged. Where you know they could they could release a a dozen Pokemon a month, and you know keep it going for the whole year. I think that it's going to be a, a, a good generation to keep a strong pace of releases um, because it's not like Gen 4 that you had a lot of, you know, evolutions or just, uh, you know, big lines. Like, there's these are all new Pokemon. This was almost like a rebirth when Black and White came out for Gen 5. So all new stuff, a lot of new designs, a lot of weird fucking names. Let us know how you feel about the release of new Pokemon and how uh, the trickle theory works are you into that or would you rather have everything kind of dumped all at once like if you were to go buy a new 3ds game or sword and shield all the pokemon are in there you don't have to not you all know, of wait them you gotta have to be two. released in dlc you have shield and sword because you gotta trade them to get the ones you oh, can't get boy. it's sword and shield all right shield and sword <laughs> you guys have been fighting listen i have pins forever. i have pins all right sword and shield you always pick up your sword first um i always there shield first why? No. You have to. Why? I'm always attacked. Then, I'm then, always then, being then attacked guy, by then, both then of then you. The guy who's exactly the guy is going to attack you, and all you have is your shield. Yeah. I'm just gonna stay all there. Right. And get have you ever heard of a riot news, guys. shield? We're moving on. We're moving on. We're running long. Melissa and Adam are going to Montreal. Adam, you're going to Montreal, right? Uh, what? He are you going to Montreal? Yet. I no, might be. He doesn't know. I'm going. Melissa's, <laughs> going. Melissa's like 110 percent in the cat bag, but I'm, I'm like going. maybe I'm there. I'm like I have a ticket, but I don't know. Ticket. I have a passport. So I'm not going. I'm not going. So this is I'm putting a call out. 
I need all you motherfuckers to find Melissa in Montreal and buy her a shot. Why would you say that? That's so <laughs> stupid. One, no, don't do that. Yeah, buy her 20 I, shots. Wanted, no, no, you buy me Snorlax plushies. Everybody go out and buy some sort of Snorlax memorabilia something sticker. Fuck and, that. And, or if you no, can make it, Jaeger even I'm, better. I'm driving. I'm driving. I, okay, this is what I want. If you see me, you need to buy me a version of poutine. Oh, Melissa's excited to have real poutine. Yes, and and I I'm dreaming that they have different versions of it, like a let let yeah, with like a spicy chili, like or a poutine with what? like it's fucking is French there, fries. Is there a vegan green. option? No, and if well, there was, I wouldn't. Yeah, you know, somebody let if us you go know. to a vegan spot. Yeah, you need vegan out. cheese curds. <laughs> well, okay, <laughs> okay. Well, not gravy. vegan cheese. I mean, is vegetarian, vegetarian. Just stuff that doesn't have like turkey legs in it. Turkey legs, marmoset, well, marmoset legs. I don't know. <laughs> All I know is, is that they say a instead of what or duh. Okay. A a. No, I'm I'm really excited for Melissa. She actually had to get her passport because uh, she's never been out of the country. I never Exciting. did anything fun. Now I get Exciting do fun times. stuff. So I'll be home, and Melissa and potentially Adam will be in Montreal. So honestly, in a real note, if you do want to hook up with Melissa, definitely shoot us a message on Twitter, and um, you know I'm sure she'll be posting on Instagram or something. You could track her down and say hi. And uh, yeah, track me down, say hi, and then uh, hang out with me for a little bit. Walk around, catch some fucking Pokemon with me. Yeah, you I'll guys be, are gonna uh, have Gen Five. I'll be in lonely. Montreal. I'll be lonely. Come and hang out. Play. Nice. Trade. All right. What else we got? In miscellaneous news: A group of nineteen trainers took down a Rayquaza using only Sfeel. <laughs> I was requested to try and do this. I have six. I have an army of six Sfeel ready to go. So these they call themselves Sfeel Team Six, <laughs> and they had it was nineteen trainers, full Sfeel teams using Aurora Beam and Hyper Beam. I'll link the video in the description. It's pretty fucking funny because it's just hilarious just seeing the whole thing go down but they did it so you can take down a Rayquaza using nothing but Sveal. Uh, <laughs> Adventure Sync version 2 is being tested right now in Australia and New Zealand this will allow your phone this is going to be great for Gen 5 it will allow your phone when the game is off and Adventure Sync is running if you get near a new Pokemon it'll send you a push notification so even if the game is off you'll get a notification that a new Pokemon is nearby that's dope. So that's that won't rolling work for out. Me. Well, nothing works for you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but this is rolling out right now in Australia and New Zealand. Um, the version, the the it's in there, but I don't think it actually has started uh, rolling out as far as functionality yet. But I know the update is out there. Uh, let's jump over to Go Ranger real quick for a check in. What's up, everybody? It is Go Ranger Matt, and this is the Go Ranger check in. All right. So we mentioned earlier in the show. The gift event is a wrap. Blanche's global rewards are going to be uh, is a wrap now because we recorded this a little bit later. Um, so those 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 bonuses are done. But again, we're prepping now for uh, water festival. We're prepping now for the ultra bonus unlock. There's just so much shit that's going to be happening, um, you know, over the next couple weeks. Uh, we have September first, July, and August research are finally becoming to an end. We'll have a new research breakthrough Pokemon jumpstart with friends. Uh, the bonuses with getting extra balls and extra damage and raids will be ending on September second. Same thing with Rayquaza going bye bye September second. And remember, we have Deoxys uh, coming into Tier Five raids uh, after Rayquaza. Guys, I think we did it. I think we should. It we sounds like we show? did it. I think we did a show. We did. A sh- we had a lot of stuff in this show. There's a lot of shit. There's a lot of shit. Panda Man, thanks again for coming on the show. Cool dude. We gotta we gotta play with him since he's so close. I know, man. I know. It's so I know. Stupid. We gotta hook up with all those people. It's like they're saying that once once the weather breaks a little bit and it's not going to be so hot that we'll do another Saddle River uh, Community Day because fucking Squirtle Day was hot. Mm-hmm. 
that shit was hot. Maybe in the yeah, it maybe was in the fall. Like, like temperature hot. It was physically. Oh hot. yeah, no, it was fucking sweating. It was I was sweating fucking bullets. But yeah, we'll we'll uh we'll definitely hook up with him and, and Omni and, and the Burrs and all that. I miss those guys. They're all fucking great. Good, good, good people. Uh but yeah, that's the show. Thank you guys so much for making it through the episode. We appreciate it. Uh please check out luredup.com for everything that we're doing. Check out uh Prof- Pokemon Professor Dot com for everything that's going on in the network. I do want to make an announcement. I kind of teased it last week. Go Stadium is putting out a new podcast called Stadium Cast on the Pokemon Professor channel. Um, the uh, We put out some preview episodes here on the Lured Up feed, uh, 0.1, 0.2, 0.3, and uh, it's going to be its own standalone feed in about a week. So definitely look for that and search for Stadium Cast on iOS, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, anywhere you can get podcasts, YouTube, um, search for Stadium Cast. Make sure you subscribe. Um, I, I feel really good about this podcast. I think they have a great thing going and a really cool dynamic. And the next episode that's coming out, sneak peek, an interview post PVP Invitational with King IV, Pogo King, uh, is going to be on Stadium Cast. So very excited to uh, to hear that. I can't wait to hear the file. That's gonna I have it exciting. sitting in my inbox. I must. I must. I get to hear it before everybody else. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right, guys. Thanks so much again. Uh, email us info at luredup.com. Uh, we did have another email from Pidgey Grabba, and we didn't get to Pidgey Grabba's uh, raid uh, battle party that he had brought up last week. So we're going to get to that again next week. Sorry so much, man. We had so much shit going on here today. Uh, but you can leave us a voicemail, 732-835-8639. Email us, info at luredup.com. Check out luredup.com for everything that we're doing. Leave us a review on iTunes. We would appreciate it. Guys, you got anything else? No, I'm good. No? We did it. We did it. We did it. All right, everyone. Have a good night, and uh, keep fucking training, trainers. You guys are ultra.